Thank you very much. I'm going to share my slides right now. <clears throat> okay, uh, so good afternoon. Um, thank you very much to the organizing committee for inviting us to participate in this symposium, especially to Batu, who extended the invitation to Meta Sense. We are very honored to participate. My name is Laura Sensi, and I am the Communication and Communities Coordinator of Metadocencia. We attended here together with Paz Miguez, uh, Project and Course Development Coordinator. Uh, I am connected now from Córdoba, Argentina, home of the National University of Córdoba, founded in 1613. Uh, in Metadocencia, we work as a fully distributed team of 18 professionals in 11 cities and four countries. Today, we would like to talk about some problems there are in global open source science and suggest some actions to address these challenges. For further info, see the link, please, uh, our source, which is published in the slide. In the first place, like other areas in science and technology, scientific open source development tends to be dominated by activity originating in North America and Western Europe. Latin America is a large, rich, and diverse continent with huge cultural diversity, and we don't intend to generalize, but we hope it serves to open the discussion around how we can better make the development of open source and open science a more global endeavor, where all cultures are truly welcome as equals. So let's say hi to the elephant in the room. Global doesn't include the whole planet. That elephant comes from asymmetric power and privilege in some regions. This cartoon is about global health, but applies to open science too. On the bottom of the slides, you will find the sources. Including the whole planet will entail tackling lack of diversity, equity, and inclusion. For us, open science real promise lies in offering not only access, but agency as first-class participants and co-creators to people from all nations. In second place, the role of English as a language of exchange must be addressed. As Laura Sion pointed out, considering only English as the scientific lingua franca makes humanity miss out on massive amounts of knowledge. We know that translation is a difficult process and scientists need to be fluent in English. But language interpretation would allow choosing from an enormous pool of new, fresh and brilliant speakers for meetings and events if we were more open to interpretation to English and captioning. In Latin America, we rely daily on high quality captioning in Spanish or Portuguese to watch movies or sitcoms. Reading captions is a relatively easy habit to incorporate with a huge impact to make room for learning from the valuable work of those not comfortable sharing their knowledge in English. Making the elephant more concrete, let's take a look to this map by uh, Juan Pablo Alperin, scale according to the number of papers indexed by Web of Science in 2016. It's so much alike the one that uh, Leslie Chan showed uh, earlier, right? Uh, this is not the map we would get if science were truly global. The map is a scale considering all first country. In addition to the language barrier, the current power and privilege as asymmetry between Latin America and high income regions is the main barrier. If you are, for example, a scientist or a university instructor in Latin America, you may not have good connectivity, space, or equipment. You may not be able to access literature, events, or spaces due to language or accessibility barriers. You may also have to work at several institutions at the same time to pay your bills. These conditions surely take time away from further training, research, and sharing your results with your colleagues, your community of practice. You may be aware of all these issues, but you don't know how to address them. When you live in Latin America, the problems are obvious, but they are difficult to grasp when you're not in the territory anymore. As Angela Pune mentioned at this year's CZI Open Science Annual Meeting, 
we need to double down on efforts to invest in human and social infrastructure in addition to the technical infrastructure. It is critical to have local persons with a history of advocating for the collective good at international decision-making tables. They will have a better understanding of what ideas click locally and which don't. The more there is a dialogue between all geographies, the faster all barrier, barriers will fall. So how can we go about this scenario? As some of you will probably know, Metaocentia start in exceptional times during the pandemic, but not in exceptional circumstances. As Larry said, in Latin America, we deal every day with inequality, social and economical crisis, privilege barriers, and so on. So Metaocentia was the response to the need and the urgency for incorporating tools for a quick and effective switch to educational online events Understanding that isolation increased limitations in accessibility and inclusion, both for students and instructors in our region. Nowadays, Metaocentia is an international community of researchers and educators dedicated to equipping individuals and organizations from Spanish speaking regions and beyond by providing open science resources, delivering professional development training and supporting infrastructure design and implementation. We believe that improving scientific and technical capacity in Latin America will increase equity in society and accelerate innovation across the globe. And we work for it. Our mission is to boost innovation within a local perspective. Our mission is to build scientific and technical capacities through networks learning spaces and accessible resources from Spanish speaking communities. Through almost three years, we have developed a range of courses and events from people who teach scientific and technical skills in Spanish speaking contexts. Among other achievements, we have conducted 81 workshops reaching more than 2000 people across 30 countries. 98% of attendees express high satisfaction. We are open. All of what we do is open, reusable, free, and in Spanish to lower the economic and language barriers. We also collaborate on the identification and implementation of guidelines to improve the accessibility of our content and events. Our courses, are shared with an open, like, open science and all of our events are free to attend. Recently, uh, we have reviewed our governance and on doing this, we have invited others to take part in the sessions. There were attendees from 14 countries that represented 11 communities. Working together is better. Some days ago, I heard that science is like building a house because it's something that you cannot do alone. That's why we enjoy working with others and participating in other local and global communities such as a ladies, women in bioinformatics and data science Latin America, the Turing Way, Via Libre Foundation and Open Life Science who have been instrumental in our growth as well as the support from Code for Science and Society and the Chang Zuckerberg Initiative. We are looking forward to deepening our ties with the community through events and additional training, as well as fostering an active community on Slack and social media. As we said before, uh, we have plenty of challenges in the present and we will solve them better and faster if we work together. We'll continue to share openly our internal practices and experience on how to grow from a volunteer lead organization to a fully founded one. We are convinced that doing this will foster the development of other global South Center communities of practice for open and reproducible research. That's our way, a way to build regional scientific, technical and research capacity in order to overcome the issues presented before. Thank you all for your time and attention, and obviously for, for the information, please visit our website. 
Thank you so much, Laura and Paz. Um, please keep